Hi, I'm Mark Grierson, Field Application Engineer with Digi. Welcome to the XP Files. Today's video is the first in a series of short tutorials to help you get started in the powerful world of Digi XP radios. Today we'll be working with Digi's XP3 Zigbee Development Kit. This kit contains three Digi XP3 2.4 GHz radio modules and three development boards and all the cables and antennas you'll need to get started. Due to its simplicity, I have chosen to flash the radios with DigiMesh 2.4 firmware. In future videos, we'll also look at the Zigbee and 802.15.4 protocols. You'll also need to download and install Digi's free XCTU software. XCTU simply stands for XB Configuration and Test Utility. This tutorial assumes that you have a basic understanding of the functionality of XCTU. For more instruction on how to use it, please refer to its user guide. I've already got my kit set up with my radio modules connected to my PC. Let's start by opening up XCTU. There are multiple ways you can add a radio. Under the XCTU menu item, you can select Add Radio Module to add a single radio, or use Discover Radio Modules to scan all your COM ports on your PC and find multiple connected radios. These two methods for adding radios are also available by clicking these two radio module icons with the plus sign and magnifying glass. The plus sign icon is to add a single radio at a time, and the magnifying glass icon is to search for and add multiple radios simultaneously. So let's click the radio plus icon and add our first radio. Select the baud rate and other COM port characteristics, and then click Finish. Once the radio is discovered, it will be listed under the radio module section on the left-hand side of XCTU. With some preliminary identifying information, such as the radio's factory assigned serial number and COM port information. The currently assigned protocol, in this case Digi's XB3 DigiMesh 2.4, will be displayed. And finally, if a node identifier has been set on the radio, it will show up under name. To read and set additional parameters on the radio, simply click the radio module and the parameters of the radio will be displayed on the right side of the screen. Here we can see the product family the function set, and firmware version currently installed on this radio. Let's give this radio a name. To do this, we'll select the node identifier parameter, NI, and enter the name base. Notice that when we enter this name, a little green triangle will appear on the right side of the parameter. This indicates that the value of the parameter is not the firmware default, but has not yet been written to flash. We can write this value to flash by clicking the pencil to the right of the parameter. Once written, the triangle will change to blue, indicating a non-default value that is written to flash. These triangles can make it very easy to glance to see what parameters of the radio have been changed from the default values. You'll also notice that the name base now appears on the module listed under radio modules. Let's quickly add two more modules and give them names, node one and node two. I'm going to do this by opening up two additional instances of XCTU. I'm doing this simply because it makes it easier and quicker to switch between radios. With DigiMesh firmware, the radios are configured to communicate right out of the box. XCTU makes this easy to demonstrate by opening up the built-in console tabs for each radio. Make sure that you click on the open button on each console, and then you can simply type text into the console log section of the base radio. The data will be transmitted to the other radios and displayed. Please realize that as you type characters, each one is being transmitted over the air as a separate RF packet. To send a single string of RF data, you can use the plus button to the right of the send packet section. This will allow you to open a window and create a string of ASCII or hexadecimal data. You can optionally give this packet a name and then click add packet to add it to the send packets window. Now to send it as a single RF packet, simply click the send selected packet button on the right and the packet will be sent to the other two radios in our small network. I hope this tutorial has been helpful in getting started with adding your XB radio modules to XCTU and sending your first RF transmissions. Please watch for future videos where we'll build on our skills working with Digi XB radio modules. See you next time on the XB Files.